Hi, Anne here from the school's liaison team in LIT and welcome to the latest in our LIT chat series, where today we're chatting all things digital animation production. And this course is offered at our digital campus in Tomel. It's available at level eight through the CAO and the course code is LC518 and it's part of our award winning School of Art and Design. And also students require a portfolio for entry to the course as part of the admissions process as well. So I'm delighted today to be joined by my colleague, Michael Kiley, who heads up the course at the Clonmel campus. Hello, Mike, how are you? Hi, Anne, how are you? I'm, I'm good, good, thanks. Thanks so much for, for joining us today to chat all things digital animation. You're welcome, no problem. Good stuff. So I suppose to start off, we know that, you know, the animation industry in Ireland has grown an awful lot over the last 10 years or so. Um, and even though Ireland is only a small country, we very much punch above our weight um, in the sector as well, you know, competing with some of the, the, the larger animation studios worldwide. Um, and obviously we have developed the course to meet the, the skills needs for that area, you know, within Ireland and further afield. So could you start off maybe by telling us a little bit about the course itself and maybe what kind of student would be suited to studying digital animation production in LIT? Well, basically, our course and uh, is is designed for a student who is interested in animation and knows pretty much this is it. Animation is the field that I'm going to enter. So we begin straight away in first year by going straight into animation training. So our students traditionally come from they have a they've done art for the leaving cert or even art at a VTech level you know, an art portfolio preparation course or something like that. So they have an art uh, portfolio and they're, you know, that's there for presentation, for examination, for entry to the course. Uh, we also have some students who would have studied um, TCG at second secondary level and would have an interest in sort of design and 3D modeling as well. So we do get, you know, a, a, a little bit of a side kind of a, a group on, on that respect as well. So that's generally who we tend to get in um to our animation course great stuff and you mentioned the portfolio there as well which is obviously a requirement um of the program as well and i know the portfolio is scored out of 600 and applicants yes. need to score at least 240 out of 600 to pass that portfolio aspect of the of the process so when you're looking at the portfolios um each year what do you look for what um sort of approach should a student take when putting their portfolio together so generally, and our, our, you know, a portfolio is a, represent, a representation of a student's sort of creative skills and their abilities, but it's also a representation of their interests and their own personality as well. So it can be, uh, you know, we, we we're quite interested in a mix of work, you know, showing that the student um, is is very interested in sort of investigating different artistic styles, um, whether different types of drawing, um, you know, from still life right through to life drawing. Um, observational drawing as well, uh, but also, you know, mixed media, different painting methods, charcoal, um, and more specifically for animation, we're always interested in people enter into a bit of character design and prop design as well, you know, the props that a character would use, uh, location design, you know, painting environments or backgrounds, uh, storyboarding, trying to tell a story through, you know, panels and images. Uh, but even in our portfolios, we would have some sample animation, you know, small clips. It's probably easier now than it ever has been to create, you know, small bits of animation, either using an app on a phone or like a flip a clip, you know, or on a computer um, to do some stop motion. So we, we do actually get some, some kind of animated work. It's not a requirement, but it is nice to see sort of the traditional um, elements of a portfolio plus some of the newer um, uh, some of the newer kind of uh, kind of technology assisted methods of actually creating some portfolio work as well but we get everything you know from poster designs to um, uh, we, uh, to uh, photographs of sculpture work you know it's 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 all very very useful in sort of assessing students creative ability and and sort of seeing you know where their where their interests lie and where they want to go um, within the course itself um, but our, our, our most interesting thing in a portfolio is often the sketchbooks and the sketchbooks show all that process work, you know, shows how the student thinks and how they sort of develop their ideas where we're so interested in the process work in terms of, you know, how much a student um, actually creates and how many, how much they experiment, which is incredibly important in the, in the field of animation. 
Okay, so really you're looking um, to see that a student has potential. You, they don't need to be the Absolutely. finished article or anything like that, but you want to see that they have that creative ability and potential to build on um, the natural skills and talents they have, and that when they come into us in LIT, we'll help them build on those. Absolutely, you know, that they're ready to kind of investigate further because there's always, even within animation, there's lots of different kind of subfields that we can kind of go, you know, dig into a little bit further. And, you know, the, the you know, from an employment point of view, at the end of the day, there are specialisms in animation that, that people tend to gravitate towards as they go through the course. Okay, okay. And one of the things I suppose that we're highlighting in our chats, our LIT chat series, is the practical aspect to all of our courses in LIT, and I suppose none more so than areas like digital animation production, which is very hands-on, very practical, using fantastic studios and labs there at the digital campus in Clonmel. Could you tell us a bit more about the practical aspect to the course that students will, will follow? Well, as you can imagine, uh, and the, 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 in terms of uh, the setup from a from a daily perspective, an awful lot of the work is practical or tutorial based. You know, we have a certain amount of lecture content, but that would probably be very much in the minority. Um, an, an awful lot of our work is by you know learning by doing, and going through a, a critique from the lecture, and then kind of refining what you're doing. So. Everything from drawing exercises, you know, through to work, uh, but you know, the more traditional things, work at an easel, for example, for say life drawing or observational drawing. That's all monitored by by lecturers, and you sort of get on on the job advice, basically. But that ex you know that extends to the digital tools as well. That an awful lot of our you know say animation classes, they are practical. You will be animating in the class, and your lecturer or supervisor will actually be. You know, commenting on your work and how you can improve it and then you sort of apply that so it's all very very much hands-on you know even in this pandemic time you know that that process continued online on a kind of a one-to-one -one basis pretty much um, with our students so it didn't actually vary as much as you might imagine um, there was a you know there's an awful lot of to and fro there's an awful lot of interaction with the with the lecturers and sort of advice and guidance as to sort of how to progress and how to improve so it's very much a hands-on course and even outside of the visual field you know that that extends as well that when people do team projects you know that you know you learn how to work in groups you know we run modules like effective teamwork that actually help you deal with working in a group help you deal with managing conflicts you know creative conflicts or personality conflicts because so much of animation is a group activity that's important for us to train people you know how to interact you know how to pitch to you know deliver your idea to people and actually convince them that this is a good idea and it's a good thing to make which is an important um, skill in animation right through to you know where i am at the moment is i'm in the sound lab you know being able to not only record um say uh, voices for characters but also being able to direct actors you know interaction with other human beings that to kind of hold the goal of what you want to get at the end of the day so be able to direct another human being to actually give the right kind of voice performance that would actually work for what you want. So very, very hands on, lots and lots of um, group work, lots of um, individual activities as well, but always practical, always hands on. And there's a work placement built in to the course then as well, isn't that right, in the third year? There is a work placement built, in, built into at the end of the third year of the course, um, students go out to work placements. So our current third years will be just beginning their work placements now. And work placement is incredibly important just to get experience in 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 the, the field or experience in a studio that you can actually learn how you know how life runs from a day to day point of view. We do try and mimic that as much as possible um, in a third level, but to a great extent you can't quite experience exactly that unless you actually go out into the, the real world and get uh, actual work experience. Although we do mimic it to a certain extent with some of our assessments because some of our assessments are for or set by uh, industry so for example in the past year we had an assessment for one of our modules set by um, the post-production head up from cartoon saloon you know so they gave us the content and our students had to process it and he um, evaluated the results or say our second year students make short films but they make them for the Clamwell Junction Arts Festival so the theme is set by the festival the director of the festival actually sits in on their presentations as they're you know, pitching their initial ideas um, right through to when they actually show the, the finished films at the festival so there's an involvement from the arts industries the creative industries in what we try what we're doing as well 
So we're trying to expose people to the to the to the real world and industry as much as possible. So that's fantastic because they're getting to meet people that are, as you say, working in the in the industry that are at the top of their game, getting to build up a portfolio of their work as well, which helps them, you know, as they're moving towards graduation and have to put themselves out there looking for work and put themselves in the shop window. So it's a great opportunity to build up that portfolio. And you mentioned as well those other soft skills that students mentioned, which are really important as well that you know alongside the creative and the technology skills those life skills that you need for you know working in teams and working in groups which are really important skills to have as well so it really is a very broad based degree in, yes. in that sense as well yes it, it it's incredibly important to us you know that that students can produce good work but they're that they will also be actually good to work with because i think when uh when it comes to uh getting work after finishing your degree, um, a huge thing is that you can have a fantastic showreel, you know, and we do help with portfolio and we do help with showreel development. You can have a fantastic reel. So when the studio sees your reel, they know you can do the, they know you can do the work. When they interview you, they're trying to assess your personality and how well you'll fit in with, with their studio. So we try and cover both um, sides so that to actually uh, help people become the complete package. Fantastic. And as you say, teamwork is so important because the nature of that job is, you know, there are so many different people involved in different stages of the process that teamwork is very important. So I suppose the animation industry, it's, it's I suppose, very fast changing. It is expanding at a great rate, but it's changing at a rapid rate as well. And I know uh, you guys, you, up, you know, the course is updated every couple of years to make sure that it's relevant. It's up to date. Students are coming out with the skills that, you know, that companies are looking for. So after their four years on the course, then, what sort of opportunities are available to students? Well, the, 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 the main opportunities I would say would come from the, the mainly the 2D and 3D animation industries. And, and they basically break down into um, 2D and 3D for film and for television. OK, so essentially um, there's a, a sort of a series of roles that are that are in a studio that exist for people, say, in 2D animation from the kind of pre-production roles, which is the first phase, like a concept artist or a designer um, to our storyboarder um, to the more kind of production focused roles like a background artist or a layout artist or a rigger, or of course a character animator, which is, you know, I've gotten to five or six and I've only gotten to character animators, you know. Um, even within that, sometimes there's character animators who concentrate on um, quadrupeds, you know, so the cats, dogs, lions, tigers, or the more traditional bipeds like humans and human-like creatures. Um, but there's also other roles in post-production, like a compositor, and a compositor basically puts the backgrounds and the character animation together and then does all the extra things like lighting um, shadows and sort of styles the frame quite a lot to kind of give you the final version and within 3d there's so many roles 3d animation 3d riggers 3d modelers 3d textures 3d lighters tons and tons and tons of you know things that our grads have actually gone on to work in all of these different fields primarily i would say most of our grads are character animators um and then some do background art, art uh, some do compositing, you know, some do all different kind of parts. Some go on to focus on being designers, but a big part of our fourth year um, in particular um, is to actually focus somebody a little bit and sort of say, well, what is it you want to concentrate on? And let's give you modules that help you concentrate on being, let's say, a background designer, you know, rather than a character animator, because usually by that stage, people have a, a reasonable indication of where they're going specifically and what they want to focus down to. So we, we try and get people up to the right skill level so that when they go for, you know, at the end of college, they go for a job interview, they're actually at the right skill level to be able to get into a studio immediately without any further training. Yeah, so I suppose students really kind of find their niche as they yes. go through the course as to the area that they want to focus on or maybe move towards after they graduate into going into this exciting and really fast paced industry, uh, which sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, Mike, I think you pretty much covered everything um, that we had hoped to touch on today about the course. It's such an exciting area. There's such a fantastic team involved in teaching on the programme in Tomel and students will really be working on state of the art facilities that's, you know, that's industry standard so that they will be familiar with all of the equipment and that they'll be using when they go out into the world of work as well. 
actually it's it's something and that sometimes people bring up to me when they're applying is that they're sort of worried that you know they may not do digital painting say or use digital tools but i mean that we train them in that from from the start of the course you know nothing ever quite replaces pencil and paper it's where everybody starts but you know people do eventually start switching over to tablet drawing and uh, and doing that so we you know we help people do that you know in recent years you have sort of people um, um, a mix you know kind of people who do digital draws and people that don't that's something that we don't assume at the start you know so we actually it's built into the first year of our course so having that interest is the main starting point really we don't expect you to have any prior skills no. before before you come into the course. Probably one uh, final thing to mention as well, Mike, is we're in the change of mind uh, space now and that even though there is a portfolio requirement for the course, students can still add the course to their change of mind preferences up to July 1st and they will be called um, for assessment to submit a portfolio after July 1st. Is that correct? I believe so. Yes, that's correct. The, the portfolio submission at the moment is online, so people scan their portfolios and actually submit so they're actually judged completely online and the results are sent back to you. Good stuff. So for anybody uh, watching uh, this chat today, uh, there's still time for them for them to apply and get the, the course in on their CAO. So Mike, thank you so much uh, for joining us today and chatting all things digital animation production. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. I hope you found this chat useful. If you would like any more information about this course or any other course in LIT, check out our website at LIT ie you can message us uh, through any of our social media platforms or drop us an email to schools at lit.ie and we'll be more than happy to help you out so thanks again for joining us today and hope to speak to you soon take care for now